The Capo and Joe podcast is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air. Fast and reliable AC service. Welcome in, Campo and Joe. We are ready to rock and roll, cranking out a podcast, a little Facebook Live for those that got the invitation and logged on. We appreciate it. Joe C. from XL Primetime, our head coach, Dave Campo. And Coach is back from just a little bit of a battle with the Rona. And you're looking yeah. good, Coach. You're yeah. a little lighter on your feet, though, right? Well, I am. I lost about nine pounds, but guess what? I needed it. So <laughs> I, I'm looking at it as a positive, just like I do most things. Yeah. It's funny because way back when, when I got the Rona, I followed the Rona with the colonoscopy. And so uh, it was like the COVID colonoscopy diet, and I lost like 20 some pounds. There you go. That's the way to do it. Take it, at least turn yeah. it into a positive, right? Yeah. But this is an easier Rona than what we had before. Yeah, I, you know, again, uh, I think it's uh, moving towards the flu variety. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think people should be waiting at this point for uh, a vaccine that is well documented <laughs> all the yeah, way through. And it's like a flu shot. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and you know it's going to have a, a big effect. Yeah, but, exactly. I'm just but glad. listen, I made out all right, yeah. and that's the way it goes. Yeah, I'm glad you're better. That's the most important thing. And you know what? The Jaguars got better. Now, this was a, a trip across the pond, facing the Atlanta Falcons team, coming off a kind of a stinky loss to the Houston Texans. But as we kind of get to the game, the Houston Texans won a home game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kenny Pickett got hurt in that game, but it was late. And all of a sudden, Coach, you've got four teams in the AFC South that are all two and two. Well, you know, this is, hey, that's the NFL. You know, the NFL is about parity. When you start saying, well, this uh, division is down or Mm -hmm. these guys aren't very good, the majority of teams in this league on any given day can can, uh, jump up and bite you. So, you know, to me, you know, every game is different, you know, and I think that's why going into the Bills game this weekend, you know, anything can happen. Yeah, well, I'm going to throw some numbers at you later about C.J. Stroud. And Jacksonville looked pretty bad against him, but this dude's putting up some pretty good numbers in the first month, and that was against a pretty what would be regarded as a pretty good Steelers defense. Right. But let's get to the Jags against the Falcons. And I think more than anything else, Coach, they needed to get back to looking a little closer to what most people were forecasting. We were forecasting a high-flying offense. It's still not there, but they did beat – they did beat a susceptible football team they needed to beat. Well, you have to win the games you're supposed to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't last week. But right. This week we did. And so that's a real positive. And I, and I really think uh, what our team has to do is take care of their own business. Mm-hmm. Not worry about too much who they're playing or where they're playing or any of that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. they need to, you know, clean up the things that need to be cleaned up because we have enough talent to be in every football game. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to be the key this week as we go forward. All right, so let's let's state the obvious here. This is where I kind of go moto, master of the obvious here. Uh, it was a football team that had a bad quarterback, okay? I don't think too many people would argue uh, on that front. They have weapons in Kyle Pitts that they don't seem like they're getting the football to, and Drake London, and it's because of the quarterback. B. John Robinson, definitely a weapon. So this defense was a lot better, but – it was against a, a bad offense. Well, yeah, and, uh, you know, the positive is that they looked at that team and they said, hey, we can play some man coverage against this team mm-hmm. because we match up with them, mm-hmm. and that's what we did. And you saw all those passes deflected and right. all the different things, a, a big interception for mm-hmm. a touchdown. Uh, you know, those kind of things, uh, you know, we're a better football team when we can match up to where we can get close to receivers. Yeah. And and uh, we we did a good job with that defensively this now, weekend. We're, we're going to be looking at Buffalo in a few minutes, and that's a that's a much better bunch offensively. But what what can you take out of what he did, Mike Caldwell, the defensive coordinator? You're a former play caller on the defensive side. What can they take out of it? Even though it was against lesser competition, and I use that, you know, that term loosely in the NFL, it, it was lesser competition. What can they do to, to keep it going? Well, first of all, I think when when you look at a good defensive football team, it's a team that, uh, you know, it creates their own breaks. Mm -hmm. And that's what this football team has done for two years defensively now. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they had a number of turnovers in order to win going forward. Unless our offense gets on track and really starts exploding, Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to win the turnover battle. And they're doing that. And as long as you win the turnover battle, you've got a chance Mm -hmm. in every single ballgame. That's probably the biggest statistic 
as far as winning or losing and how much you're winning by. So, you know, that, that they can take away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also were able to scheme up some blitzes this week that were better than what they have to this point. Yeah. So I think they're getting better, and, and I think the defense is getting a little better each week. You know, it's funny, coming into the year, I wanted to preach that Mike Caldwell in his second year was going to be much better as a D coordinator. I thought Trayvon Walker was going to be much better as a pass rusher. We'll get to that coming up. But Josh Allen made his share of plays, and they schemed up, like you just said, Coach, because they had Cisco and Herndon in the backfield with pass rushers, and both of those guys made huge plays in this ball. Yeah, and the big one of the sacks that that uh, Josh Allen had mm -hmm. was – Herndon set it up right he, there. You know, he was open. He had yeah. no choice, and and you know that was kind of a gimme sack. Mm -hmm. You know, and that has to happen. Yeah. You know, you just don't beat these NFL players every single per time. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, an edge rusher beating an offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. There's other things involved. How much pressure you're getting inside. All those kind of things are, are you know, involved in in getting the quarterback on the ground. Mm -hmm. So, I think they look at the game and they say, okay. You know, we're not we're not giving up big plays, mm -hmm. although they were very lucky on the one that uh, he got behind uh, 31 yeah. and he, he dropped the, inter you know, third right, and so dropped the interception during a two minute drop. Yeah. yeah. But, so tell everybody real quick, because there was a, a, the basically the last four minutes of this game. You choose to not kick a field goal when you're already up 17 to nothing. And then you find yourself in a situation where Darius could have made another play. Well, you know, that's how that's how uh, difficult. It is, and how one or two or three plays make a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, the we don't take the field goal. The, uh, you know, during a two minute drill, you don't want to give up a, a big play. It got it got Shaquille Griffin fired from mm -hmm. us last year. Yeah, yeah. Well, the guy was wide open behind uh, Darius Williams mm -hmm. in a two minute drill, and and pick it under threw him. Right, and. Darius dropped the interception, but he's lucky he got back there forward to two drop the interception, or else that would have been a touchdown. And then they come back out in the second half and they take the ball down on the first drive and score. Yeah. All of a sudden you're you're looking at uh seventeen to fourteen right. uh instead of twenty to seven. Yeah. And so, you know, that can happen at any time and and we just have to make sure we don't let those things happen. But we're not giving up big plays, mm -hmm. which is a real plus, and we are turning the ball over yeah. defensively, and that's what's gotta happen going it, forward. Back to the Trey Herndon part of this, he got beat on that Drake London score, and he also has been a little bit of a liability in certain plays. But you go to the six minute mark in the fourth quarter, go to what you said a minute ago. They they could have been in an entirely different situation, but it still was twenty to seven at that moment. He makes a great play in the back of the end zone. And, I mean, a much needed play because that would have turned it into a one score game had he not made yeah, it. Yeah. And, and, uh, I forgot to mention that with the last thing I just said mm -hmm. because they ran a, a, a you know, a, a, a kind of a, a rub type of a situation on mm -hmm. that one. And they were a little indecisive between, uh, Williams and, and Herndon right. as to who had who. And the corner route, it was open and Herndon, took off and got back there and made a great play. But put that one, he got one foot in, mm -hmm. put that one along with those other three things I just mentioned, and it might be a different football game. Yeah, so, it, it, you know, we're, we're making plays when we have to make mm -hmm. them defensively, and yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, and I think the thing that's probably a little more frustrating for Jaguar fan, look, uh, you're happy when you win. There's no doubt about that. But you also have – this is what we do. we got to look at it and say, okay, this is what could have happened. This is what might have happened. This is what you need to button up. You know, that's what we do. And I think to myself, offensively, this football team scored one offensive touchdown in, in a game against against a very, very beatable Atlanta Falcons team. You need to step on those teams when you can. You go back over the last three games, nine points against Kansas City, zero touchdowns. You go to the next game, 37-17. That's a 20-point loss, but they did score twice. And then you go to this game, you take away the Darius Williams pick, pick six, they scored one offensive touchdown. So over three games, they've averaged one touchdown per game. Yeah, that that's not the offense that we need to do what we need to do. No. And I think that, you know, that's going to be a major factor. I was asked uh, on the primetime show mm -hmm. what I think, you know, has to happen. And I mentioned, you know, that we had to run the football and right. et cetera, et cetera. The one thing I didn't mention is 
we better not worry about Buffalo. We better worry about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm-hmm. And we've got to find a way to clean up some things and and uh, offensively and start to put some points on the ball because we've got the we've got the uh, firepower, right? But we've got to get the ball to the firepower. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. All right. So let's stay there with this receiving game with the quarterbacking and with the offensive line play. Heck, you can hit all of them, Coach, because the football team's not running for a very (laughs) – I mean, it's a putrid yards per carry average right now. 20 totes for 55 yards for Travis Etienne's not going to get it done. And you're having less and less time in the backfield to make a decision and make a throw. Yeah, I think our problem right now stems with the offensive line. And, and, you know, they don't get recognition when they do well and they – right. They get all the recognition when they don't. And and I think we're really struggling, especially with the inside three. Uh, you know, from a physical standpoint, uh, we're busting some protections, which is unusual. I mean, I last year I thought the offensive line was one of the strengths of the unit, mm-hmm. even though they weren't great. Right. There wasn't a lot of pressure. There weren't a lot of sacks. Right now we're getting pressure up the middle, which is the worst Mm-hmm. place you can get the pressure mm-hmm. because that now gives those outside guys a chance to get there on the right. quarterback and right. and uh we've got to get that cleaned up and and uh you know that's some of that comes from the fact that that we're not running the football effectively mm-hmm. the one thing i did like about it though is they stuck with the run game and they and they tried to make something happen at least mm-hmm. try to keep it balanced yeah and in the end that makes a difference yeah i, I don't mind uh, a one yard, a two yard, a one yard loss, whatever it might be, as long as they can break a big run here or there or set up something successful in the passing game. And they haven't broken really any big runs. At least it doesn't It doesn't look like they have a, a whole lot of opportunity to break big runs. No, it doesn't look like it. And uh, the one thing I was a little surprised with in this game is that they didn't pull the linemen more than they mm-hmm. did because I think that's one of the strengths of this group is that they've got linemen that can run. Okay. You know, and uh, they may not be, you know, Fortner is not going to take a 300-pound guy and knock him mm-hmm. three yards back. He's right. not going to do that. But can he pull when there's nobody on him? Absolutely, because mm-hmm. he's a great athlete yeah. for his size. And so, you know, there's a lot of different things you can that you can do, and I think we need to start uh, making sure that we give the quarterback enough time, mm-hmm. however that is, and that we start running the football. Uh, I thought I was going to see a lot of this coming out of the preseason. And I know I mentioned it to you and I mentioned it on XL primetime. I thought there was going to be more moves for Trevor in this passing game. In other words, boot it left, boot it right, a moving pocket of some sort. And we're starting to see it, but I, I think it's by necessity now. Yes. And Trevor is becoming, I think, a little more understanding of when to take off. He sacrificed his body a couple times, but he made some big plays. Well, I think they told him, you know, I think he did exactly what they told him to do in this game. You Mm -hmm. know, they did have more movement in the game. They had some boots. They had some boot throwbacks, Mm -hmm. some of that kind of stuff. Uh, The the thing that is bothering me is that I think they're having to tell him, look once, maybe try to get a second one. But if you feel any kind of pressure at all, mm-hmm. get out of there. Yeah. And that's good in some ways because he's made some throws off right. of that. He's also made some runs off of that. But in the long, in the scheme of grand scheme of things, you want him to be comfortable. Yeah. And, and I don't think he's comfortable right now. And yeah. I think they've got to find a way to get him comfortable. Like I can go back two weeks ago watching Joe Burrow. They, were, they wrapped up that calf. They're trying to do everything they can to keep him uh, as as healthy and safe as possible, he is standing in the pocket, and there's just traffic all around him. Right. And he's making the throws. Right. He was successful. He goes on the road the next week to Tennessee, and the Tennessee Titans eat him up. Yeah. Well, that Titans defense is going to be looking at this too. So I agree with you. It's good and bad. He yes. needs to figure out how to be comfortable back there amidst all that chaos. You know, when you get pressure on you, and and, and of course everybody zeroes in on sacks. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons that we were semi-successful last year, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. was because we did pressure the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. We didn't get a lot of sacks, but we pressured them. Well, you know, when a quarterback feels pressure, he can't operate. All these NFL quarterbacks can make all kinds of throws if they don't feel pressure. Mm -hmm. It's when the pressure is there and they don't have time to wait around, uh, that's when you get into some problems. and. 
Uh, you know, the good thing is, I think they they got him on the move a little bit, and I think they're going to have to do that going forward. And I and hopefully Cam uh, Robinson coming back maybe will be somewhat of an answer as far as, uh, you know, getting a little bit more time. All right, so let's stay there because Cam Robinson comes back. He's been allowed back with the team two weeks leading up to the return after a four-game suspension. So he's practicing now they do. They call this the acclimation period. I threw a stat at you earlier uh, on XL Primetime, and it was pointed out by one of our listeners that if you take a look at the the efficiency of Cam Robinson, you can bag on him here or there, too many flags. You go back, PFF, they show how many times he's given up sacks over his uh, four years in the National Football League. Is it four? Five? I can't keep track. 20, yeah. 2017 until yeah. now. He um He hasn't given up as many sacks as you might think. He's not been flagged as many times as you might think, right. but they do stick out. So here's the stat. Andrew Thomas of the Giants, one of the linemen for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a core four, and Cam Robinson are the only guys that have given up five sacks with over a thousand snaps the last couple of seasons. That's pretty good. The Capo and Joe podcast is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air. Fast and reliable AC service. So what are they going to get from him when he gets back in there? Well, I think there's a lot to it. I mean, you know, number one, is he ready? Mm -hmm. You know, can he come back after, uh, you know, being out for for, uh, four weeks? Mm -hmm. And really with two weeks where he wasn't even in the building. So, you know, that's that's a little bit of a concern. I mean, right. you know, one of the key things is going to be trying to keep our quarterback upright. He's been very good at it. Mm-hmm. Is he ready to to be very good at it this week? Do you move? Who do you move? Where do you move? Do you try to use uh, Walker Little, for example, in inside and part of that three guys inside? Does he, can he do that, number mm-hmm. one? Number two, uh, it does that help you? Right. And, and you know, those are the kind of things that we don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't know if he's going to play at all this week, mm-hmm. you know, after, uh, you know, being out for that many years. I do think, though, if he is ready in, in their mind mm-hmm. and they do more of Walker Little in it, it will help us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's something that we've got to find out this week. And hopefully we we can hold off the pressure a little bit. Yeah, I sit there. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted trying to figure out which – way to go what's the best solution to a a glaring problem right now i'm putting cam back at left tackle i think that's what that that's that's the direction i would go and then anton harrison played well enough this past week to give you pause if it was a week earlier you might have put walker little over at right tackle and said hey man go back to that position you're gonna have to hold it down because anton's not faring well well now tyler shatley has replaced ben barch so you already have one guy being replaced. If you move Walker Litter in there, you're moving Shatley back to the bench. At least you're only disturbing two positions on that left side. Yeah. yeah. So that might be the best. Of yeah. It. I'm just, I, you know, again, I, you know, I don't think Shatley coming in was that big of a no, difference no, for, he, between he and Ben Barch, to yeah. be perfectly honest with mm-hmm. you. Uh, I think that they need a lot, of, a lot more in there than they're getting. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, I, I listened to Leon. Mm -hmm. You know, Leon played the position. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I coached for 46 years, Mm -hmm. I wasn't an offensive lineman. Right. You know, he said that the the decision to move somebody inside is not as simple as you think it is. Because all of a sudden, they're in the action. Mm -hmm. You know, when they go in there at that guard position, you got guys lined up on them. And and, And it's left and right. Yeah, exactly. It's not just Mm one-sided. So, uh, but if anybody can do it, Little can do it from the standpoint that he is physical enough mm-hmm. to do it, mm-hmm. and he's athletic enough to do it to against some of those athletic inside rushers, mm-hmm. and you know uh, he's smart enough to do it. Mm-hmm. So, you know I, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting to see what happens there, and I'm hopeful that if they make that move, that it's going to make us better right. going forward, and that's going to be one of the keys. So this team was scoreless basically the first nine minutes of the game. Then the uh, scramble play that Trevor had to find Calvin Ridley in the, in the back of the end zone. It was a great play, and they needed it in the worst of ways, and Calvin was wide open. Now, 
let's go to the passing game. Like we said, there's going to be a moving pocket. There's going to, they're trying to do different things here to give him more time, and they obviously need to make sure that they get the, the run game short up if they can. How can you get more out of Calvin? How can you get more out of the, well, the battery of, of weapons that Trevor has? Well, the first thing on Calvin, uh, he is a little rusty. I mean, you know, I see him running some uh, routes that probably should have been run at eight yards and they're being run at 12 yards. Okay. You know, I mean, there's some things there. And and teams haven't doubled him as much as I thought they might do mm-hmm. early. Uh, the one thing I see with him is he's not a precision and and I don't know what he was like at Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I I really didn't follow him at the time. But, but he, he had numbers now. No, no numbers. numbers. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm talking about disciplined routes and you. all that kind of thing. Uh, I, I know this about him though, is if the quarterback has time, he he's a little like Anthony Brown. Mm-hmm. He'll find a way to get open. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I saw it during uh, preseason. A couple throws that he made great plays on throws, and I said something to Press Taylor, and I said, "Man, that was a great, great catch, great throw, whatever." Mm-hmm. And and Press said to me, he said, "Yeah, the only problem is he didn't run the route correctly." <laughs> so you know, there's some of that, and I think that's kind of boiled over towards how much he's being used in the last couple ball games, mm-hmm. because that combined with a couple drops in the second game. All of a sudden, I'm not sure how much Trevor trusts that he's going to be there when it needs to be there. Now, the opposite side of the the Mm -hmm. coin is Mm -hmm. everybody has to pay attention to him, whether they double cover him or not. They're going to lean somebody over there. Safety's going to lean over towards that side. So his presence on the field is going to open it up uh, for Kirk. Yes, you would think. For uh, Ingram Mm -hmm. and hopefully for uh, Zay Jones Mm -hmm. this week. You know, and and you know that's a plus in itself. But with him, the quarterback's best plays with him have been when he's scrambled, yeah. because he's gotten himself open, and then you throw it down there, and he either gets a pass interference mm-hmm. or he catches the ball for a touchdown. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they've got to clean up some things there. But I think that if the the key is give the quarterback time. Mm-hmm. And give him an opportunity to execute what he can do. Yeah. He's got to be a little frustrated right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. And he's probably doing a little film study, a little self-scouting and said, okay, the only way I'm going to have what I want, which is a contract year, a big number coming his way, because when the Jaguars traded for him, they had to, you know, basically pick up that option. And they know that the, there's another contract that's that's in the offing if if he plays well. And so, Trevor will start to trust him a little bit more. Calvin will give him a little more intel of what, right. of what he's trying to I do. I think it will come along, yeah. and that's what what we're hopeful about, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and and getting Zay back is going to be key. And he's a guy that I, you know, I, I think I probably described too many guys as security blankets for Trevor. But it seemed to me this last game when he when Trevor needed it most, he went to Christian Kirk, right? And he found him moving the chains. These were air yards, ten plus yards right. per throw, right? And he's there. Zay comes back. You have all these different guys that can do different things. Evan Ingram's really starting to blossom again as a right. tight end. Yep. That's a legitimate threat. Maybe it will all start to come together. Yep. Just block them up. Yep. I think Trevor's got to be a little frustrated because it all looks like it's him, but it's it's not. It's a combination of different things. Yeah. The one thing I do worry about is rushed in the pocket. Yeah. I really do worry about that. Yep. And yep. this is a football team. Let's get to Buffalo here. We'll spend the last few minutes – on Buffalo. This is a Buffalo team that's knocking people on the ground. They're taking the football away from them. Uh, they're they're bullies on that side of the ball. And they're going to come in, and they got after Tua, who had been standing upright, had really not been touched, 700 yards of offense, 70 points, all this kind of stuff. Miami comes out of the box pretty hot up in Buffalo, and then it was all Josh Allen and company after yeah. that. Well, you know, I, I, they're they're scoring at a, a, a record pace right now. I think they're mm-hmm. leading the league or second in to, in points per game. Mm-hmm. They're up in the thirty, ground thirty, I believe. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, I think the thing that that we have to do is to 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 to, to slow that down is is don't let them run the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yet they didn't run the ball very effectively against. Against the uh, the uh, Miami Dolphins, right, and they still put up 
30 plus points, points yeah, exactly. or whatever. Whatever the number was. So, yeah. uh, you know, the biggest thing is going to be how well can our offense control the ball during mm-hmm. the course of the game, and that means balanced. Mm-hmm. Run the ball in. You can run on these guys now. If you look at Buff- Buffalo's stats and you mm-hmm. watch the games, uh, they, they're giving up a pretty good amount of yardage <laughs> on the ground. If you can keep them off the field with a, with a controlled game, mm-hmm. you're going to have a chance. You can't yeah. let them score 30 points. I don't think we can outscore them. Yeah, so 48-20, like you said, in the 40s last week. In the 30s the week before, they're averaging around 30 points per game. Uh, they had Stefan Diggs on the, on the receiving end of three scores. Uh, they did a lot. Josh Allen had four throwing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, over 300 yards, perfect passer rating. So he is not making mistakes right now. And this is a football team that when they're operating at this high clip, they are tough, tough, tough to hold down. On the other side, Matt Milano, 10 tackles. Greg Russo, two of the team's four sacks in the second half. They outscored Miami 17-6. to six. So I don't know where the weak point is, but this – Pass pressure that we saw against Desmond Ritter better be there against Josh Allen. Yeah, we're going to get a little. We're going to need to get a little pressure on him. And and I'll be honest with you, going into the season, I thought we matched up with these guys. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, every game is different, Joe. Yeah, you know that's true. That. You've taught me you that. Know, all we have to worry about in this game is certain things we need to do, which is run the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, be balanced. Uh, you know, uh, don't let them get their running game going so that right. you can do some things in the secondary to take care of Diggs mm-hmm. because he's the big guy. Mm-hmm. There's other guys that can play, but he's the guy you got to really be conscious yeah. of. But the main thing is let's take care of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm-hmm. We've got to perform to our best. Mm-hmm. If we perform to our best, this will be a, a good b- football game and – you know, I, I think you'll see that we, we compare with some of the better teams in the league. This is Doug versus McDermott. Right. Exactly. It really is. And you can go Ken Dorsey versus Caldwell right. because those play callers are going to be matching wits. But this, right. honestly, Doug versus McDermott. Yeah. I think our guys have to come out ready to play, and they've got to make sure that they're disciplined in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I think we can make it a ball game. All right, Coach. I love it. Uh, look. Sky's the limit. If this football team can come back three and two instead of two and three, they can get right back in position to try and take control of the AFC South. We mentioned earlier there are four teams, four way tie. Um, and we're going to see which one of these teams can jet out to an early lead. I thought it was going to be all Duval to start, but that loss to the Texans definitely clouded the the picture a little bit. We had a great time hanging out. We appreciate those on Facebook Live. Anybody who downloads the podcast or listens to it, Josie from XL Primetime, we'll be back with you at noon tomorrow. And Coach Campbell will be back with us on Friday. Enjoy it as you get ready for the Jags taking on the Bills. This presentation of the Campo and Joe podcast is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air, fast and reliable AC service.